In the last lesson, I demonstrated how to create absolute and local URLs using the anchor element. Now we're going to go through the process of creating a navigation section for a page. We're not going to refer to the styling just yet because you're not there yet, but we're going to look at the markup, what would be required. So let's say we have a handful of pages and we have forms, lists, and links. We'll use these. These will be just fine. So as before, I'm going to link to first the lists.html page and we'll do it like so. Now one thing worth noting is, let's say I created a new folder and we call this about and then we created a new file called index.html. At this point, this file is stored within the about page. So if I wanted to link to that, I would have to be sure to first reference the folder name. In this case, about forward slash, that refers to a folder, and then index.html. And that would successfully refer to the about page as I'll demonstrate right now. There you go. So remember, when there's folders, always reference the folder name, then the subfolder, then the file name. Now what if, for example, you're within this page and you want to reference a file that's a parent, that's outside of the about folder? Okay, well let's experiment with that really quickly as a proof of concept. If we want to reference lists, note that we can no longer do this. Preview it, and I click on it, and it's not going to work. And the reason is we are telling the browser to look for a file named list.html that's within the current directory, which is right here. But there is no list.html file within this folder. Instead, we need to tell it go up one folder to the root directory and then look for a file named list.html. We can go up a folder by doing period period forward slash, and that means go up one folder. So now if I preview it and I click on it, sure enough, we are correctly linking to that page. So that's something you definitely want to keep in mind. So let's return to our navigation page and we want to create a handful of links. So I'm going to copy this and we'll create another one. And this one will go to forms. And just for fun, let's create one more that'll go to the current page, which will be links. So let's update the URL here. This one is called form. This one is called lists and I'll get rid of the about folder because we no longer need our example. Now, right here for links, how can you link to the current page from within your markup? Normally, you would never do this, but if you wanna just refer to nothing, you could do pound, and that refers to an anchor tag that doesn't really do anything. So that's something to keep in mind. It's often used with JavaScript, perhaps incorrectly, but we'll get to that in a future lesson. So if I preview that, once again, we have each of these links, displayed in a line, but we want to create semantic markup. So we're going to return here and we're going to create a list of navigation links. But with HTML5, we now have access to something called the nav element. And the nav element was made specifically for the purpose of displaying navigation areas. Now, a navigation element isn't like an unordered list. You can't suddenly embed a list item like so. You can only use a list item when it's inside of an unordered list or a definition list or an ordered list. Now, what you'll find though, is you can get away with doing this because the browser will assume certain things. And when you use a list item, the browser will assume, okay, they just forgot to create the unordered list. So I will go ahead and assume they meant to do that. But that said, you shouldn't do this. Never make the browser assume if you have a better option. So a navigation element, let's see what we get here. I'm gonna preview it and everything looks the same. So what is the advantage to using this wrapping nav element? And again, it comes back to that term semantics. It makes sense when the browser is reading this page, when it comes across a navigation element, it knows that everything within this element is going to be related to navigating your website. It's also really important for accessibility reasons. For example, when people are using screen readers, if they can't see the screen, they need to be able to hear where the pages are and providing more semantic markup can help with that greatly. So now we have our navigation elements we have a list of links, so let's go ahead and embed, once again, that unordered list. Now, always remember when you can copy and paste, definitely do so. There we are, and we'll do one last indent to make our markup nice and clean. So let's preview and see what we ended up with. I'll click preview, and sure enough, we have nice, clean markup. We have our unordered list. I can link to each of these. 
and we're correctly stating that the contents of this navigation element are correctly navigation links. So let's say you want it to look a little bit more like a horizontal menu. Okay, we're not gonna cover CSS too much, but let's go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to link to a style sheet that we learned in a previous lesson, and the ref is going to be style.css. All right, let's create that file now. New file, style.css. And now, let's see what we wanna do here. We want to refer to all list items and tell them don't display as a bullet. Remember, a list item doesn't refer to a bullet, it's just the default visual for a list item. It can be anything you want. So let's return here and say list items, list style, and that's going to be bullet or disk. There's lots of options. We're going to say none. And if I come back and preview it, sure enough, that's being displayed correctly. Next, I wanna say display in a line. Right now, remember how we learned that list items by default, according to the browser's default style sheet, will display as a block. But this time, we wanna say, no, I want you to display in line like the anchor tags that we saw earlier. So now let's come back, and if we preview it, now they're being displayed in a line. Let's take a look at that one more time. See the difference? So now we have a simple set of navigation links. If you'd like to provide a little padding after each one, you can do that. Padding right, and we'll say 10 pixels, just to give each one a little bit more breathing room. So now we want to let the user of our website know these are navigation links. That's easy, maybe before it right here, we'll say browse the website. Now we have our navigation links, but once again, we have that default spacing that's applied to unordered lists. So let's go ahead and reduce that so that each of these lines line up perfectly. Unordered list, padding left, zero. And now those are lining up nicely and we've successfully created your first set of navigation links.